So good morning everybody from St John's Church. You'll see that I am neither at home nor in my garden this morning for morning prayer. And this is because the bishop has said that clergy are now able to come into the church on their own uh, to, to pray and to worship. So I thought I'd bring you morning prayer um, from St John's this morning on this um, Thursday morning, 14th of May. And although I'm here um, recording morning prayer um, today for you, uh, I think we will continue our Sunday mornings at home uh, because in our older churches like this one we don't have Wi-Fi so I'm not able to uh, bring you a live service. Um, and I think that's been one of the wonderful things about that we've been able to do with Zoom on a, on a Sunday morning is that we've all been together in our various homes. Some of you I know um, have told me they're enjoying your croissant and your coffee. Um, but we're live and together and we know that we're worshipping together, uh, which has been a wonderful thing about uh, being able to use Zoom to bring our service to life and live on a Sunday morning. So I think we will continue for the time being uh, our Sunday mornings from our various homes um, with various team members. Um, but for this morning, morning prayer from St John's. If you are following uh, the readings, as usual, I will just read the, the main reading from the New Testament this morning. But if you wanted to read yourself uh, with your own prayers this morning, the, the um, reading set for today, we would be reading Psalm 16, 1, 6. And from the Old Testament, we would also be reading 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verses 27 to 35. And the New Testament reading, which I shall read shortly, is from Acts, chapter 2, verses seven, uh, 37 to the end of that chapter. So let us pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. And the morning acclamation for the Easter season. Blessed are you, Lord God, of our salvation. To you be praise and glory for ever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise for you all your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so our reading this morning as I said, it's taken from the book of Acts. It is chapter 2, verse 37 to the end. Now, when they heard this, the people were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptised, and that day about 3,000 were added to their number. 
They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and their goods and distribute the proceeds to all as had any need. Day by day, they spent much time together in the temple. They broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So all this time between Easter and Pentecost in a few weeks, we're reading through the book of Acts um, in our daily prayers and um, on our Sunday mornings. And do read the book of Acts. It's a wonderful account of how uh, the gospel was taken all around the world and the the struggles of those early apostles. And of course, those early apostles uh, didn't have uh, a church building in which to meet. They used the temple premises and they used each other's homes um, and other places. And as the um, first century goes on and and the persecution of the Christians uh, becomes greater, they have to hide in homes underground um, or, or not get together because it was too dangerous and many Christians, as we know, lost their lives. But that reading this morning is taken, it's um, just after Pentecost actually, so on the day of Pentecost, the um, disciples go out into the streets and start proclaiming the word of God and everyone who is there is hearing the word of God in their own language. Um, And Pentecost is a Jewish festival, it's like harvest. Uh, So it was a time when Jews from all over the world would have gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate. So there were people of many different languages uh, gathering together, many different um, areas of the world that they'd come from. And yet, when they heard the disciples, the apostles, speaking about God, because they were full of the Holy Spirit, they heard it in their own language. So probably the very first miracle to happen. And it's a, a day when we get to Pentecost that we Um, celebrate the birth of the church. So again, of course, the birth of the church doesn't mean suddenly they built a building um, and met in it. They didn't. They didn't have buildings. Uh, The church is the people. And that's what's so important about meeting together. And and why we have a church, I suppose, is that we we can meet together in our church and encourage each other in our Christian faith and come to learn about our faith a place where we can come and do that, we can worship, we can feel those many years of prayer seeping into us as we're in a building like this one. But that's not what makes us Christian. What makes us Christian is our reading of the Bible, our love of God and of each other in the world. So that reading that we've just heard, I often use um, at baptisms because it talks about um, Peter. Peter is talking and he says to the crowd, be baptised all of you and repent of your sins. And that day 3,000 were added to the number. I don't often do 3,000 in a baptism at once, luckily just usually the one or two. Um, But there are um, places around the world, particularly in Africa, where baptism will be held only once a year, as as is traditional and would have been done in the earliest Christian times, just once a year. And um, so many hundreds or or thousands are baptised all at once. In this country, we tend to do one or two at a time. And that baptism, I sometimes wish we wouldn't baptise babies um, because it's such an important sacrament. so important to our Christian faith, it's when you become a Christian and it's such a shame that we can't remember it because the majority of people were baptised when they were babies and they don't don't remember that special moment. Which is of course why we, in the Anglican Church, 
um, will confirm people later on so that they can have that experience of um, welcoming God and the Holy Spirit into their lives themselves rather than having their parents and godparents do it for them. But um, baptism is such a, such, such a special time and we as baptism, baptised Christians, uh, that's what's important, that we take our faith, all that makes us Christian, that brings us joy, that we take that out into the world. We don't need to bring it into the church. We take it out of our church buildings into the world. And maybe that's something we're learning about a bit more in this strange time that we find ourselves in. I hope we as church ourselves, um, as the wider Church of England, as churches around the world, we're, we're really learning what it means to be church and to be Christian. So let's pray. Father God, by your grace, we are your children. Through your Son, we are redeemed from sin. In the Spirit, we are sent out as Christ's witnesses and servants of your kingdom. We pray for the church in its life and in its mission. We pray for our bishops of this diocese, for Tim, David and Debbie, for all ministers, we pray for our own churches here in this benefice, in Ampfield and Chilworth and in North Baddersley, and for all who worship in our churches. But we pray for those around us. We pray for those new Christians, those who have only just found faith, or those who are searching. We pray for your suffering church around the world. Those places where it is difficult to meet, not just because of this dreadful virus, but because of violence and war and oppression. And Lord, we ask you that you make our lives bear witness to the gospel of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for leaders of nations in the great responsibilities they bear. We pray for our Queen and our country, for our government. We pray for our local communities, for all those who are in the service industries, those who are looking after us in the NHS, but all those who are doing such essential work to keep us well and to keep us safe. Lord, we pray that you would help us to make our lives be of service in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for people in need. We pray for those who care for them, we pray for all of those we care about and think about and hold in our hearts. All those people around the world, in different places, that you have asked for prayers for. We hold them now to you, God, and pray that you would keep them well and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember that with thanksgiving those who have died. We pray for all of those who have lost loved ones in our communities, those whose funerals will take place in these coming weeks, those who took place last week. We pray that all those families who are left to grieve, that they would know your grace and your love, and that they would come to believe 
in your hope of an eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give thanks for all that is good in life. We ask that you help us to appreciate each other's tal talents and glorify God in the way that we use them. And so, gathering together all those prayers in our own hearts and minds, we pray together now the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so the collect for this week, the fifth week of the Easter season. Almighty God, who in place of the traitor Judas chose your faithful servant Matthias to be, the num to be number of the twelve, preserve your church from false apostles and by the ministry of faithful pastors and teachers keep us steadfast in your truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour, your, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And so may the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>